Today on Fluent Football, we're going to take a look at 17 words and phrases that you need to know to speak about tackles and fouls in football. My name is Matt. Thanks for joining me. Before we get too far, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps me out a lot and gets you all the latest content from Fluent Football. So here we go, 17 words and phrases for speaking about tackles and fouls in football. Let's go. Number one is a challenge. A challenge is just a synonym for tackle. It means the same thing. You can say a player makes a tackle or a player makes a challenge. It is an attempt to win the ball or stop the opponent from dribbling. There are a number of different types of tackles and challenges, such as number two, the sliding tackle or sliding challenge. This is exactly what it sounds like when a player makes a tackle or a challenge and they slide along the ground. Often when you see a sliding tackle or a sliding challenge, you will hear this phrase, number three, go to ground. This is just a common way to say make a sliding tackle. You could say, for example, John Stones went to ground to stop the attack. It just means John Stones made a sliding tackle to stop the attacker. Number four, a reckless tackle or a reckless challenge. This is basically just a bad or dangerous tackle. So if you make a tackle, it's not very controlled and you risk injuring someone. Doesn't matter if you do or don't injure someone. The point is you could injure somebody. We would call this a reckless challenge or a reckless tackle. Reckless tackles are a great way to get number five, a booking. A booking is what you get when you receive a yellow card. It's when the referee puts your name in the book. It's called a booking. So you can say he made a reckless challenge and got a yellow card or he made a reckless challenge and got a booking. And of course, we know that two bookings will get you number six, a sending off. When a player gets a red card, they are often sent off and we will refer to this as a sending off. For example, the center back made a reckless challenge and received a sending off. But if your foul isn't very bad, if it's not particularly dangerous, you might only get number seven or eight, a caution or a warning. This is basically just when the referee speaks to a player, tells them to calm down, tells them not to be stupid, don't make any more fouls, they don't get a yellow card, they don't get a red card, the referee just says calm down, it is a caution or a warning. You could say the center back fouled the forward, and the referee gave him a warning, or the center back fouled the forward and he received a caution. Players often get cautions or warnings when they do this next one, number nine, bring somebody down. This is exactly what it sounds like. It's when you make a tackle or a challenge or you foul somebody and it causes the person to fall over. It causes them to go on the ground. You bring somebody down. For example, Maguire made a reckless challenge and brought Sterling down. An easy way to bring someone down is to do this next one, number 10, to trip somebody. This basically just means to use your leg to make someone fall over. If you put your leg out and they fall, it is a trip. You trip somebody. Of course, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't try to trip people, but even if you don't, your opponent might do this next one, number 11, dive or take a dive. This is what you do when you want the referee to call a foul on your opponent. So if someone tries to tackle you and they don't get the ball and they don't touch you, but you want a free kick, for example, or maybe a penalty if it's in the box, you pretend to fall, you go to the ground, you roll around in pain, you scream, ah, okay, referee, referee, it's a foul. This is to take a dive or to dive. Fortunately, this is something that does not happen very often in football, only one or two times every three minutes or so. Not very often at all. Which players do you think are most guilty of taking dives? For me, a certain Brazilian maverick comes to mind, but I'm sure there's others. I'm sure there's more that you can think of. 
comment below and tell me which players do you think love to take a dive. A player might choose to take a dive because they are unable to do this next one. Number 12, draw a foul. Draw a foul just means to play in a way that causes your opponent to foul you. Think about Lionel Messi dribbling through players, very difficult to stop, and often someone will make a challenge and they will end up fouling Messi, and then he gets a free kick. So we would say that Lionel Messi drew a foul from the defender. And often in this case, the foul will not be an accident, it will be intentional, in which case we would call it, number 13, a tactical foul. Tactical foul is exactly what it sounds like. It is an intentional foul because a defender or another player does not see another way to stop an attack. So you'll see it a lot when there is a counter attacking opportunity. The defenders or the midfielders are worried that one of their opponents will get away and get a good shot on goal. So what do they do? They intentionally foul this player to stop them. It's the easiest and best way to stop them. It is a tactical foul. Something that is generally not considered a tactical foul or considered a foul at all is number 14, a shoulder barge. A shoulder barge typically happens when two opponents are running after the ball, they're both chasing the ball, and one of them uses their shoulder to push the other one out the way. This is a shoulder barge. Most commonly, it is shoulder to shoulder. If you do it in the back, for example, obviously this is a foul, but shoulder to shoulder to push them out the way is a shoulder barge. When you do a shoulder barge, you need to be careful. You don't want to do it too hard, too strong, or your opponent may need number 15, a stretcher. A stretcher is what we use when a player gets injured. It's what they use to pick the player up and take them off the pitch. You should not try to send your opponent off on a stretcher and something else you should not do is number 16 and 17, waste time or run down the clock. Waste time or run down the clock is what a team does usually when they're winning, sometimes if it's a draw and they're happy to take the draw, but it just means that they don't try to play to score, they just try to play in a way that uses time and stops their opponent from scoring. Two of the most common ways would be to dribble the ball into the corner by the corner flag and just pass it around or move it around there. Just try to stop your opponent from taking the ball. This is a perfectly legal way of doing it. The other one is when you see the goalkeeper make a save and then he spends about 30, 45 seconds, possibly a minute, just wasting time before he makes his goal kick. This is not a legal way of doing it. That's against the rules, so you shouldn't do that one. There we go, guys. There were your 17 words and phrases for speaking about tackles and fouls in football. If you think I forgot any, go ahead and comment them below. Thanks for joining me. If you found this video useful, please hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I will catch you next time. Cheers, guys.